immediately. All right, thank you. Well, well, well. Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me. But isn't that eminent world traveler, teacup juggler, and sometime employee of the State Department, Kent Foster? How are you, Kent? <laughs> Hello, boss. <laughs> oh, no. Are these tired old eyes of mine finally conked out, or is that a boutonniere you're wearing? <laughs> Pretty sharp, huh? Oh, go away, you imposter. The Ken Foster I knew wouldn't be caught dead wearing one of those. Snap. Well, when'd you get back from London? Two hours ago. What about Angela Booth? Did you keep a date with Nick? She kept it. Well, how? Where? It's all right in here. Some of it might be kind of hard to follow. I'll give it to you briefly. Oh, wait a minute. This down. The girl can transcribe it to the chief later. All right, go ahead. I guess it really begins last fall when we got that cable from the embassy in London about our elusive friend, the mysterious Nick Randall. Mm -hmm. They found out that Randall was a friend of an American girl singer, Angela Booth. Angela had no show business name when she left the States, but in London she had become a star. She was appearing in a West End theater and getting a terrific reception. Nick! Oh, Nick! How are you, honey? Surprised? Surprised? That isn't the word for it. <laughs> Oh, Nick, please, you'll spoil my makeup. I'd like to spoil more than that. Oh, you. I've got to hurry. I've got to change in three minutes. Don't go away now. Fine thing. I see you once in three months, and I'm the one to be kept waiting. Never the public. They paid to get in. Besides, whose fault is it? The three months, I mean. You're right, honey. Hasn't been easy for you, has it? Never knowing where you go or when. Or what kind of work you're doing or how. I can't even write to you. The time should ever come that I had to reach you. I know. I give you a rough time. Really, a rough time. Nick, hand me that costume, would you please? This is a costume? My public seems to like it. What do you need a voice for? With this. Just hand it here, please. <laughs> From the other side. Got a drink around? Help yourself. It's over there. You will wait for me after the show, won't you, Nick? I'm afraid I can't, Angie. I just popped in to say goodbye. Goodbye? You haven't even said hello yet. Hi. I'm sorry, honey. It'll have to be that way for now. You'll just have to trust me. But I'm hoping, and I'm almost sure that this will be the last time. How long is this time? Three months. Three months? Then I won't see you till... New Year's Eve. But from then on, you'll have a hard time getting rid of me. What do you mean? I, uh, sort of thought we'd get married that night. Nick, are you serious? Never more. That's a promise. New Year's Eve at the Oxhead Inn. You remember? The ox head. How could I ever forget? Just keep it a secret, though. Don't tell anybody. I'll meet you there, okay? Oh, Nick. You know I love you very much. And you'd do anything for me? Anything. Anything at all. I may take you up on that. What about Julian? What about Julian? He's got a big investment in you. He's put in a lot of money and a lot of his valuable time into your career. He won't like letting you go. He doesn't own me. You sure you can convince him of that? In three months? Sure. Good morning, Miss Booth. Oh, Nick.
be too long, honey. Just don't forget. New Year's Eve at the Oxhead Inn. I'll be there for sure. That's my girl. Miss Booth, please! New Year's Eve. New Year's the Oxhead Inn. Lane 6412. <clears throat> Kurt, this is Nick. You can tell him that it's all set. Yeah, New Year's Eve. Sure, I got the girl. We won't have to tell her anything. She'll never know what's going on. Oh, one more thing. The money. This deal will cost you twice as much. Why? <laughs> because there's two of us. <laughs> himself was one of the theater's few authentic geniuses. The impresario had made Angela a star, and he demanded more than simple gratitude. Angela knew getting rid of him wouldn't be easy. She had tried it before, many times. Julian, I'm sorry if you've been worried. I've been expecting you, my dear. You should have phoned. I'd have sent the car. I always do. Julian, I know you'd prefer it if I came straight to the point. Take off those wet things. You'll catch a cold. I'm not staying. I've dreaded this moment for a long time but I knew eventually it had to come. And I think you did, too. I thought we were coming straight to the point. All right, let's have it. What is it this time? Last time you ran away, it was your nerves, and the time before that, you were tired, you wanted a rest. I've met someone, Julian. We're in love, and we're going to be married. I see. May I remind you, you're under an obligation to me. When I picked you up in a third-rate show, you were nothing. I'm grateful for everything you've done, Julian, but must we go into the Without me, you're still nothing. Do you hear me? Bye, Julian. No. No. You're not going anywhere. I've spent a lot of time and money on you. You have a value to me. I make sure of my investments, Angela. You ought to know that. Julian, the phone's ringing. Ju Julian, answer the phone. You belong to me. I'm not giving you up to any dull-witted Romeo. The phone, Julian, answer I'm the phone. I'm sick of your cheap little affairs going on behind my back. Nobody walks out on me. Nobody! Nobody! <laughs> Julian Lord was a powerful man. Very few persons knew how powerful, least of all Angela Booth. In the States, Angela's plea of self-defense would probably have meant at the most a suspended sentence or probation. But Julian Lord pressed charges to the hilt and got her a six-month sentence. Here's a copy of the verdict and commitment order. And that's where we came into the case, huh? Right. When Angela went to jail, it killed any chance that she might lead us to Nick Randall. In the hope that we might manage to salvage something out of the situation, I grabbed the first available plane to London. I landed in London without the remotest notion of what I intended to do, but I hoped that our British allies might have some ideas. Too bad the way we snarled things up for you, Mr. Foster. Well, it wasn't your fault, Inspector. You couldn't know that our embassy was having Angela followed day and night. We were sure that she was going to lead us to Nick Randall. If only your girl hadn't bashed the bloke with the mirror, eh? Was he badly hurt? Some sort of scar on his face. To him, that was a stark major tragedy. But where do we go from here? I was hoping you might suggest something. Well, let's think a minute. You want this Nick Randall pretty badly, don't you? I wouldn't be here if we didn't. The worst way. Besides working with the spy rings and enemy collaboration, do you remember Tom Evans? 
An American, wasn't he? Killed about a year ago? From our office. Tailing Nick Randall. Tom almost had him when Nick got suspicious. Nick murdered him. I see. Tom Evans and I worked together a long time. In fact, it was just his luck to draw the assignment instead of me. So it's personal as well as official, eh? Well, let's see. The girl's our only contact with him. And it's not likely Nick will make it easy for us and look her up in prison. No, even if he knew she were there. There is one chance, Mr. Foster. Angela seems a nice girl, never been in trouble before. Suppose she didn't know what Nick was really like. If she were to find out, you think she might help us? That's the idea. I don't know. If she's really in love with him, the idea might backfire. Seems to me this situation calls for diplomacy. Aren't you in the diplomatic service? You're right. Either we take a chance or we wait till Angela gets out. The problem is to bring Angela here, let her know about Nick Randall, without her suspecting we know her connection with Nick, then we wait for her to volunteer. If she doesn't, that's it. It'll take a few days to set this up properly without making our friends suspicious. Do we take a chance? Go ahead. Inspector Hedges, would you get me the women's prison, please? Angela Booth was the intense type of girl on whom prison is particularly hard. Girls adjust to prison life in many different ways, but for Angela, any adjustment was impossible. The injustice of her sentence preyed on her mind, and the knowledge that she would be in a cell New Year's Eve, instead of meeting Nick and being married, was eating her inside. keep that chip on your shoulder, the heavier it's going to get. It usually takes them a couple of weeks to lose it. You've been here a couple of months. I obey the rules. And there's nothing in the fine print over there that says I have to go to the library. No. And there's nothing in fine print that says I have to waste my sympathy on any of you. I'm sorry. I appreciate what you're trying to do, but I'd also appreciate your leaving me alone. You'd feel better if you read some books. Wrote some letters. Had some visitors. What visitors? Ladies, one of them slipped on the polished floor. She was tripped. Oh, Miss, I had both my feet under the table. And where were your hands? Yeah, but why is it always me gets blamed when there's something missing? All I did was help her. You helped yourself, too. Nothing here. Now, come on, Bessie, out with it. Run! Well, if you put it like that... Not as if I took it for myself. I took it for the girls. Help each other. Isn't that what the chaplain's always saying? And if you help people had done your work, we'd all have makeup. And there wouldn't be no other incidents like this here.
Good morning, Miss. Morning, Thompson. Big day today. One of my husbands is visiting. You know it's against the rules to remove government property? Yes, Miss. But a girl's got to look her best on visitors' day. See, I haven't done any harm, Miss. Look. It's smoothed up just as good as new. If it happens again, there won't be any visitors' day. But, Miss, it's doubly difficult for me. I've got two husbands to please. If you'd been content with one, you wouldn't be here. But with Percy on day shift and Pierre on nights. Well, everything worked out fine. So what's the answer? Six months, wasn't it? This way. Now remember, no smoking, no passing gifts to prisoners. At the end of visiting time, you'll line up outside when I will drive you all back to the station. Right, I've told you your places. Adams. Thompson. Phillips. Day. Hello, Percy. Hello. How are you getting on? Terrible. Just terrible. I don't know how you can do this to me. You've got to make up your mind, Cleo. Is it me or... or him? Oh, easy now, Percy. I like you both. Well, that's all very well for you, but think of me having to share the flat with him. Going home to a place that reeks of cigars and that, that scented muck he pours into his hair and... and the stink of garlic. I just don't understand you two not being friends. I always got on so well with both of you. That's different for you. You like garlic. Is uh, Pierre still cooking your supper? Oh, yes, he's doing that all right. Every evening before he goes off to work, he leaves those tasty-looking meals, but don't think I'm going to fall for that lot. Oh, no. He's not going to poison old Percy, boy. I just take up the food, chuck it straight out, and open the can of beans. And it's worse still on his days off. Then he goes absolutely mad, tearing around the house, screaming his head off, waving his arms about. You know how hysterically he gets. And he keeps on speaking about the wonderful times you and he are going to have together when you get out. You know, it's driving me balmy. Sometimes I find it very difficult to keep from taking one Frenchman off the census. And another thing... I... Cleo, you, you don't seem to be very interested. Oh, yes, I am, Percy boy. I'm most interested. It's just routine, Miss Booth. The American consulate wants this information for their records. Records? American citizens who, uh, well, who have any trouble in our country. I see. We filled out most of the form from our files. Would you mind glancing over it and completing the rest? Thank you. I've got that information for you, Inspector. Good. Oh, uh, Miss Booth, this is a fellow countryman of yours, Mr. Kent Foster of the American State Department. How do you do? That's our bird's picture on top. Your government must want him pretty badly to send you all the way over here. Those reports will explain why. Collaboration with the enemy while he was in a German prison camp. Too bad the Nazis let him escape before you liberated the camp. That was only the beginning. You see, our man was smart. He knew there was a lot of money in espionage, but spies take too many risks. So Nick worked out a profitable little racket for himself as paid courier for the espionage rings. Courier? You know, he'd deliver information and pick up the payoff money. Something like a fence for stolen goods. The spies took all the risk and made Nick rich. Something the matter, Miss Booth? No. We'll be through in just a moment. But those are not my only reasons for wanting him. Besides being a collaborationist and a traitor, he's a murderer. A year ago, he murdered a friend of mine. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Booth. When you're finished, would you mind signing it at the bottom?
Welcome out, Gran. Thanks, love. It's nice to be out. Hello, Gran. Welcome home. Hello, Gran. How was it in solitary? Oh, very restful. You want to try it, love. <laughs> <laughs> Baby's getting to look more and more like you every day, Marguerite. El doctor dice que pesa 20 pounds. ¿Sabes cuánto es 20 pounds en kilos, Angela? I don't know, Marguerite, but it's an awful lot of health. And how's my little love? Did you miss his old nan nan? Hmm. You're getting everything you want. Hola, ¿qué tal? Me alegro verte. Have the body snatchers from the orphanage been to see her yet? Not yet. Well, they will. It'll break her heart, Granny, if they take away the baby. Well, it's the rules, love. Any children born to a prisoner must be handed over for orphanage at the age of nine months. Article 4, paragraph 14. Well, maybe they know what they're doing. At least he won't remember any of this. Have you heard from your boy while I've been away? I can't understand it, Gran. Even if he didn't receive my letters, he must have read about it in the newspapers. Did it ever strike you that he might be walking up and down the same sort of yard as this? Yes, it did. I spoke to the chaplain about it, but... Well, then they haven't caught him yet. You've got yourself a fine boy, love. But I don't know that he's on the run, Gran. He just said three months. It's a very familiar sound in time, love. All right, girls. Exercise time up. That's a double now. Ah, smoke up. <laughs> Come on, Gran. You don't want to get in any more trouble. Ooh. I've done solitude in better places than this, love. <laughs> well, you don't want to do it anymore. This kind of work doesn't do much for a girl's looks. Oh, well. I won't be doing many more of these. Thompson? Sorry, miss. Bat! Never misses a thing, does she? I'll be glad to see the last of them. When you get out, look me up. We'll have a party. What, and double date your husband? <laughs> I'll give you my address before I leave. You will come and see me, won't you? If I ever make it out of here. Oh, it isn't so long till March. Only 21 more shopping days till Christmas. I know. Miss Booth? Yes? I've not allowed any visitors yet, and I want to get a message to my mother. Or perhaps you could help me. Thanks for the compliment, but I'm not much good at sending messages. Here's the girl that can help. The most popular girl in school. I've written the address across the top. Reddick? Drop it in the suit. Reddick. What's written on that paper? Nothing, miss. Reddick. I want that paper. <laughs> Strange how people who can think so quickly for others take so long to think for themselves. You better let the doctor see that arm. Come along, everybody. Settle down. Oh, hello, Angela. Hello, Chaplain. Sit down. I know, I haven't been to chapel. I'm sorry, but I just can't seem to make... Oh, them. I don't want to speak about chapel. Of course, I'd like to see you there, but uh, that's your own decision. No, I want to speak about something else. I've, uh, I've talked the governor into letting us put on a little concert for the girls at Christmas, and I thought perhaps we might have the benefit of your professional advice. That's very kind of you, Chaplain, but I don't think so. 
Christmas can be a pretty lonely time in a place like this, and you could help them to laugh and forget about themselves and their problems, for a brief moment at least. Don't you think that I have problems too? Who was it who said, if everybody's troubles were placed in a heap in the middle of the Sahara and we were allowed to take our pick, we'd all be only too happy to creep away with our own. Can I think about it? Oh, of course. Angela, any word from him? No. He could bring you such a lot of happiness with such a little effort, couldn't he? Yes. You could do the same for them here, Angela. Think it over. I will. Chaplain? Yes? Do you think it would be possible for me to talk to the governor? Oh. oh I don't know. Well, I'll see what I can do, huh? Thank you. Booth, ma'am. Oh, thanks, Evans. I'll ring when I need you. Yes, ma'am. Come in, Booth. Sit down. Yes, Booth, you wanted to see me? I came to find out if there's such a thing as special leave, ma'am. I don't think I quite understand. If it's possible for a prisoner to leave under guard for a day. Well, in the case of death or extreme illness in the family, there is such a thing as compassionate leave, if that's what you mean. I know this may sound very unimportant to you, ma'am. But my whole life depends on my being somewhere for a few hours. Booth, you're serving a term here for assault. I'll go under guard, in a prison van. I'll give up my remission time. Anything if you'll grant me this one privilege. Sit down, Booth. What you ask is absolute nonsense. This is a prison. We have rules and regulations, and they cannot be tailored to the individuals. No, ma'am. You have a very good record here, Booth. I was thinking of transferring you to a prison without bars. I didn't expect this hysteria. I'm sorry, ma'am. Is it a man? Well, if he's worth his salt, he'll wait for you. Tell him that. Come on, love. Your turn. Oh, good morning, love. <laughs> Bess is still looking for them dog ends she lost. She takes more trouble looking for a cigarette than you do over your bloke. Cut it out, Gran, huh? Not today. Ooh, hark at her. You getting touchy? No, desperate. I've got to get out of here, Gran. Why doesn't she broadcast it? You must be daft. Can anyone understand? I've just got to be there or I'll lose him. But what makes you so sure he'll be there? I know. Somehow I just know. Oh, well, the fat chance you've got to getting out of this place. Some of the big ones, yes. But this flea pit... Oh, it's all right, miss. Just an accident. Drop the work box on the floor. Turn a bit tidied up. Do you see what I mean? They pop their noses into everything. Did anyone ever make it out of here? Well, not in my time. And her time's been pretty extensive. You shut up. Is it really worth it? He's worth everything. She's getting out soon. Perhaps we could trust her to take a message. If he wears trousers, no. Chum. You have to admire the girl's loyalty. Too bad it has to be wasted on a guy like that. Well, at least we accomplished something. We gave Angela a reason to want out. We're being a little cruel to that girl. Well, that's Nick's doing, not ours. Besides, we gave Angela a chance to help us voluntarily. The governor should be here any minute. This will have to be done pretty cleverly. That girl's no fool. If she were to suspect it, oh. Here she is. Come in. 
Good morning, Inspector. Oh, good morning, Matron. Uh, this is Mr. Kent Foster of the U.S. State Department. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Uh, we were sort of expecting the governor. Well, <laughs> the governor, uh, well, she uh, passed the buck to me, as uh, you Yanks put it. I've been authorized to help in any way I can. I hear you have a rather sticky one for us this time, sir. Not too bad. It all depends. On what? On how well your prison intelligence system's working. Now he's talking about my stool pigeons, as you Americans say. <laughs> Not bragging, sir, but uh, very little goes on in our institution that I don't know about. Good. We're going to need our best girl, one who can be trusted absolutely. Yes? Uh, what will she have to do? Break out. What? And take another girl with her. Think you can manage it? Well, <laughs> that will take a bit of doing, but... I think I have just the girl who could manage it. I take it you don't want the other girl to know that the escape is faked. Well, that would spoil everything if she did. Oh, don't worry. Uh, our girl would make it look good. She broke out twice before on her own. <laughs> Oh, the old Gran will love me for this. Old Gran, is that your girl's name? Yes. Jailbreak, exactly her dish of tea. Oh, yes. Gran will love me. The chaplain has asked that he might dispense with the sermon this week. Instead, he's going to ask for volunteers. At his request, the board has granted permission for you to put on a Christmas concert. Now, a different day has been set aside for each wing of the prison. Your wing will have its concert the first Thursday after Christmas. Within reason, I will do anything I can to help. But you must also realize the necessity for maintaining order and continuing our daily work routine. Chaplain? Now, I know I shan't have any trouble finding talent among such an accomplished gathering. What I do need, however, is someone to help me organize the show. Yes, Rafferty? If you'll permit me, sir, but we've got the very girl right here. Booth? Oh, nothing would please me more, but uh, I'm afraid I've already approached her. Yeah, well, if you'll pardon me, sir, she's changed her mind. And because it's for the good of us girls, I suggest that we show our appreciation in the usual way. You don't know it, but this is your lucky day. <laughs> You're getting to sound like quite a professional. Where have you been hiding all this talent? <laughs> In the mattress, of course. Where do you think? <laughs> well, do you think you're going to be getting up a bit of a concert with this lot, love? We've been very lucky so far, Gran. I have the whole first part of the show mapped out. <laughs> hey, well, it's taken ten years off my age starting all this lot. Ooh. Even a sour note sounds good in here. <laughs> Here, I'll send me first one. Now, for me sitting on shore, I'll do me acro with now, the slip. what makes you think you're going to get it first? They are both the drums, of all the trees that are in the wood. The honey bears the crown, the rising of the sun, and the running of the deep. The playing of the merry organ, sweet singing in the Oh, 
present Sergeant Rafferty and four of our girls in their impression of prison life. Forward, march! Scrubbers, halt! Left turn! Sergeant Rafferty, since you have the longest record of any person in any institution, you have my permission to take over this morning. Thanks very much. Now then, any complaints? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. No complaints. Very good, Sergeant. Call the roll. All right. Let's have it. Smith! 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 Higgins! Higgins? Higgins? You know it's a punishable offence to give a false name, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> now, I insist on a bit of shh. Smith! Not you two. You. You never seem to have any visitors. Why don't your friends come to see you? Because they're all in here with me.
Inspector Hedges here. What? Oh, hello, Governor. The Governor? Yes, of course I'll hold on. They're out. They made it. Good. They can't have gone far. Oh, hold on a moment. Three men. Rafferty, the Spanish girl, and Booth. The Spanish girl took her baby with her. Ah, here's the information you require. They what? Well, how could you let it happen? I see. What's gone wrong? All right, keep me posted every minute. Right? Three girls escaped. Three? And a baby. Little Spanish girl didn't want to take her baby away from her. So she went along. Oh, that's great. London police don't know the escapes are phony. How can they miss picking up three escaped prisoners and a baby? They'd better miss. Maybe it'd have been better if we'd let them in on it. Wasn't it you who said we had to make it look legitimate? Anyway, we're stuck now. Nothing we can do about it except sit here and wait for the phone to ring. Risking roads now. They'll be waiting for us. Come on. go by here a while ago. Right, stay there, we'll come round. Why do you think you're gone? Yes. But you're not guards. What do you mean we're not guards? Of course we're guards. We've just left our posters and... No, we're not. But would you help us? Please, I'll take her baby away from her. In the hold. Bless you. Dios le bendiga, señor. All right, stow that and keep that kid quiet. Skipper. If you're lost and looking for the prison, it's over there. All right, very funny. Have you seen anybody? Some prisoners have escaped. If you're doing your job properly, you wouldn't have lost them. I'm afraid we'll have to come aboard and make a search.
I'll be up trees half the night hunting for him. We've said we're sorry, Dad. Not half as sorry as I am. If the rest of your lot was as efficient as you two, you won't even catch a cold. Ooh. I thought we'd have it. Idea where we are, Gran? Well, I think we're in the Brentford area. Now look, you two stay here while I go and have a quick recce. Cuidate bien, no, no? A recce, love. That's French for reconnaissance. I won't be a minute. Who did you say this was? Gran? Gran, from the prison. Yes, yes, go ahead, Gran. Uh, where are you? I see. They came to London on our barge. Now they're heading for Gracie's. Reminder about the police. You're doing a wonderful job for us, Gran. Just keep it up. Now, Gran, get this. The London police don't know about our plan. So whatever you do, don't let them pick up Angela. Do you understand? No, no, of course we won't harm the girl. We want Nick, not her. Splendid, Gran. Splendid. Call us when you can, and good luck. can't walk about like that. Where'd you get these things, Gran? I walked under a clothesline and they fell on my head. Here, I'll take the baby. No one will ask any questions with me in this outfit. She wants to take the baby to friends, Gran. Well, she's not taking it anywhere. Not until we've got things planned. All London's going to be looking for a Spanish girl with a baby. How far does she think she'd get? We'd better split up to cross London. Then we'll all meet at 13 Cherry Orchard Street. 13 Cherry Orchard Street. At the back of Chiswick Market. Go there and ask for Grace. Who's Grace, Gran? If you'd asked me what is Grace, I might have been able to answer. Now, let me get going first. For heaven's sakes, Gran, how am I going to explain all that to her? Well, you're an actress. Act it. She'll understand. No, look, it's going to be all right, love. <laughs> Here. You're in prison. It looks like it, doesn't it? Well, what's that? This is my gentleman friend. I don't want any brats here. Yeah, still the same old Grace. You still got the same room? I'm warning you, Rafferty. I'll call the cops. That's right, love. You call the cops. And then I can tell them a thing or two that I know about you. You're mad. I couldn't believe it when you phoned. I know. 
The police were here right afterwards. I was afraid they'd check on you, but I didn't know where else to go. And I just had to have some clothes, Cleo. And then he dropped dead when they came in. But they were quite nice, really. One of them said he might be back. I don't want to get you in any trouble, Cleo. But I couldn't risk being seen in these things. He didn't give me much time. But I did the best I could. Thanks a million. I won't forget you for this. Come on. I don't want to rush you, but you better hurry. Nylons. Thank you, Cleo. Celebrate New Year, I thought we'd... Yes. <laughs> I'm going to get some money. Why? You know what I can get for hiding you out? Yes. I know what you can get. If Gran opens her big mouth. Sit down, sweetheart. Grizzly Grace here is going to entertain you to tea. Señor, la señora García. García, gone away last month. No es tan. Gracias. I expect a bit of money. Now, what about a balloon for the baby? Ain't eh? here? I'll tell you what. One of these for the little boy. Keep me quiet over señor. the holidays. Here, I'll tell you what I'll do. Señor, por favor. Señor, I'm going to be generous. What do you want, love? Sabe usted a dónde se han ido los señores García? Sorry, love. No speaking in language. Here, just point to what you want, and I'll serve you. See? Now, come along, you lucky people. You can't get the New Year spirit without a funny act. There you are, a funny act. Now, I'll tell you what I'll do. What do you want? I want to see Grace. You this brat's mother? No, but you should be here at any moment. Did Gran explain everything? She did, and now I'm going to do my own explaining. Where are you taking him? No business of yours. It is my business. That's Marguerite's baby. Oh, I want no part of this. We won't be here long. I promise. A half hour. An hour, no more. Just until Marguerite arrives. You've no right to do this to me. It's just until we can get the baby to some friends. You mean you all broke out for that? No, but the baby comes first. Wouldn't you fight for your child, Grace? They'll take the baby away from her. All right. I need my head examining. Fine, Gran, fine. Stay close to her. Call us the minute you know. Right? She still doesn't know where Angela's supposed to meet Nick. Never knew any woman could be that close-mouthed. But Gran's sticking with her. She'll even go along on Angela's date if she has to. I never felt so helpless in my life. If we only knew where she was meeting him. If we knew that, we wouldn't need any of this business. Care for a spot? After all, it is New Year's Eve, you know. So it is. The Grand. Bless her heart. I'm worried about Marguerite. I can't imagine what happened to her. Well, she's probably back inside where you should all be. Who should? Gran, where have you been? Shopping for his majesty. Look here, I've gone about as far as I'm going with this. Ah, yeah, you talk too much. See? See? Uh -huh. No, Marguerite. Not a sign. There's your milk back, Grizzly. And let's know how much we owe you for the gas. 
Less two cigarettes. You'll be sorry for this, oh, Rafferty. Oh, no, shut up. Supposing they picked her up, Gran. I can't just walk out on you. Who's walking out? You've got a date to keep. It's the whole reason why you skipped. But you didn't want to skip. And now you're getting left with the baby. <laughs> you leave it to Gran. I'm too old a bird not to know what to do when I'm left holding the baby. Hey, when I'm left holding the baby. Before I get sentimental. <laughs> you got yourself a wonderful granny. going unless we want the police to join the reunion. Yes, the police are after us. Grace told them everything. Policia. Policia. Oh. Look, it's better that we go that way. Oh, yes, it would be safer for the baby, Marguerite. Adios. Adios, Adios. Marguerite. Adios. Adios. Vamos, vamos, Well, come on. and go through the tunnel. Marguerite, where's Marguerite? Excuse me. Wizard Frank out in Gold's Green. 
Golders Green? Well, that's where we're going. How are you going to get there? For heaven's sakes, Graham, we're not going to go. Shut up. Wonderful, Barney. Lots of fun. Follow me. Here, wait a minute. How are you going to get to this wizard, Graham? Got a car. Got a wizard little car. Mm. Only it takes two of us to get her started. Yes, yes. Gran, I don't think I can handle this whole contraption. Get out of the way. I was weaned on this vintage. And say a prayer, because I haven't driven for 20 years. OK, Lindbergh, swing your propellers. Oh, good show. Contact. man lost them. How did it happen? I see. No, I don't see what good it can do. What now? Gran and Angela claimed to do an old MG with a drunk. Our man lost them in the traffic. Maybe Gran will call in. From a car? Answer that if it rings, would you? I want to alert all our radio units. Is this the way to Golders Green? Yes, it's a shortcut. Oh, wizard! Oh. This is going to be a bang on run. granny has got fireworks. Bomb him as a pilot. Bombs ready. Drunk, you say? What do the women look like? Uh huh. Yeah, those are our girlfriends, all right. We'll be right over. Two of our units spotted the girls and drunk in the MG. How did they happen to notice them? They were shooting Roman candles. Come on. The way. Gran, I want to thank you for everything. Oh, shut up and go on or I'll do you. Happy New Year, Gran. Well, we certainly let the old one out with the bang. Magnificent piloting. You ache. Now, where's the party? Oh, it's right here, Lindbergh. It's right here. Oh, good show.
You did come. I knew you'd get here, but when I got here and Where didn't Where have you say... been? I went to the theater and they said you disappeared. I've been in jail. Jail? Julian, he made trouble, just as you said he would. When were you let out? I wasn't let out. I broke out. Broke out? Don't you understand? I had to be here tonight, otherwise you'd never find me. Are you sure they didn't let you out? Let me out? I don't understand. Did you tell anybody that you're meeting me here? Only the girls in prison, but they wouldn't say anything. Why, you little fool, you. What a sucker I've been to believe anybody. Stay where you are, Randall. You're covered. Let go! but it's better this way. Nick was a killer and a traitor. He would have used you and then ruined you. If there's anything I can do, at least I can see that you don't go back to prison. So, Angela kept her date, and the case of Nick Randall was closed. What happened to Angela Booth? Did she go to pieces or did she finally snap out of it? What do you think? Oh, that's great. <laughs>